Algebra 1, this is uh, 0, 12 measures of center, variation, and position. So right off the front here, we have a couple variables that we are not variables. Variables, the first one. A couple definitions that we should go over. What is a variable, basically? Variable, for most of us, is like x or y, right? We've been using x or y. It says the variable. And when we're talking about measures of center, variation, position, basically kind of representing data, it's the characteristic of a group of people that assume different values in data. So it's kind of like X or Y, but they want to say that it's a characteristic. Wow, that's not writing that well at all. Let's see. A little bit of a leg today. Characteristic of a group of a group or object that assumes different values. So assumes different values. Okay. And then data. And that is called data. The stuff that you are having different values of is the data that you're collecting. So how many people have pets? Well, the number of pets people have can change, but the number of pets is the data. So that is the stuff that's being collected. So things being collected. Measurement. Measurement or quantity of data. It says units that can be measured. So basically, measurement or quantity of data is just data that can be met, collected. So you guys can write that. And categorical data is this when you can be organized. So maybe we can go as far as we can collect the data Categorical da uh, data is where we, instead of just saying, okay, we know people have pets, but what kind of pets do they have? They have dogs, they have cats, they have birds. And the last one is the univariate data. And uh, that's data that only has one variable. Data using one variable. not writing very well. Wow. These next three, most people know. Mean, medium, mode. Mean, mean means what? Mean is the Average. Oh. The average. How do you find average? You add them all up. Then divide by how many you added. Just add them all up and divide by the group's number, or the number in the group. Median. Median is the one in the middle, so the middle number. Middle number. When in order. So your first step to find the median is to take all of your data and place it from least to greatest, and then you can start climbing into the middle. Mode is the one most often. I have very few ones. Now, what we need to realize is that the mode can be 
none. It can be one number, or it can be a whole bunch of numbers, or several of them. When every single number has the exact same amount of numbers in it, like there's two twos, two threes, two fours, two fives, there is no mode. But if there happen to be a group of numbers where there are the same amount of twos and threes, and they seem to be more than the rest, as a group, as in each one, then there could be a mode of two and three. So in this particular problem, what we're going to do is we're talking about Marcus and the number of hits Marcus makes for his team and he, as he plays about one, a couple different teams there. It wants you to take the number of hits and find the mean, medium, and mode. So I'll give you guys a couple seconds to do that on your own. So to find the mean or the average, we need to add them all up. What happens when you add 3, 6, 5, 2, 3, and 7 up? What's the total? You should all have that by now. Total? 17? No, 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 no. What is it when we add them all up? 26? Okay, if it's 26, how many games were there? Six. There were six games. So therefore, I have to take 26 and divide by 6. 26 divided by 6, that's a really big fraction bar. Cut that down a little bit. I can divide the top and bottom by 2. I'll get 13 over 3. What is 13 divided by 3? Definitely not 17. 4.3 repeat. So the average or the mean is 4.3 repeat hits per game. So the average is 3.4 hits. He wants to know the mode. Let's go to mode because that's usually the easiest thing. Actually, sometimes it's easier to put, find the mode when you group them together and put them in order. So it really doesn't matter. Let's just go to medium. We gotta put these things in order. What's the smallest number? Two. Okay. Next is a three. How many threes do I have? I have two of them here and here. Next would be a five, then a six, and a seven, yes? And that should take care of all of them. Now, now that we got them in order, let's do the mode. Which one looks like the most? Which one has the most numbers? Three. So the mode equals three. This is the average. <clears throat> the mean was 4.3. The mode is three. Now you got to find the middle number. Now here's the thing. I'm going to use a red marker here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way from outside in. I'm going to cross a number off on each side. If I was doing this on my paper, I would use a finger on each hand and slowly move them in consistently until I make it to the point where I'm like, I'm at the middle. And the middle happens to be between these two points. Can you guys agree with this? When the median ends up being between two numbers and not just a single number, then you have to take the mean of these two. And since there's only two numbers, you add them up and divide by 2. What's 3 plus 5? 8. Divide by 2? 4. So the median equals 4. And so you found all of it. Range? What does range mean? Distance from lowest to highest number. The values between the highest and the lowest. So really, all you have to do is take your highest. 
and subtract your lowest. Just a little formula there. So when we go talk about an example of it, it says the times it took Olivia to walk to school each day this week were 18, 15, 15, 12, and 14. Find the range. So basically, what was the gap of times? She was to say, hey, how long does it take to get to school? She'd be like, oh, it takes me between so-and-so minutes. That would be your lowest and highest. What's the lowest number? Her lowest number happens to be the 12. Her highest number is 18. What's the range in numbers? It's the highest minus the lowest. And 18 minus 12 is 6. So the range is 6. Okay, this next slide is starting to set up something called a um, box and whiskers, really. A lot of these things are going to be used during that time. Lower quartile. The lower quartile is the lower 25%. And so these things are going to help us be able to categorize data. So it's a lower 25%. Upper quartile is the upper 25% of your data. So quartile, if you think of quarter, you're thinking of fours. I got four quarters that make up the dollar. So the upper quartile is the upper part of the dollar or the 25% of your data. The lower quartile is the lower 25% of your data. Maximum, the maximum is the highest number. And I think minimum here next, yes, is the lowest number. And the interquartile range is the distance, so range again, from upper quartile to lower quartile. Again, you find the like normal range, upper quartile minus the court, lower quartile. So in this problem, the number of boxes of donuts Josh sold for a fundraiser each day for the last 11 days were 22, 16, 35, 26, 14, 17, 28, 29, 21, 17, and 20. I want you to find the minimum, the lower quartile, the median, the upper quartile, and maximum of the data. These are going to be important things because we are going to need to find these to do solve or finish some other problems. And so start off with the easy ones. What's the minimum number? Well, they're not in order, are they? So I would personally put them in order because to find the upper and lower quartiles, you're going to need to find the median first. So what's the smallest number? So 14. That's there. Next. 16. 17 next. And there's two of those, yes? Okay. Then 21. 22. Oh, there's a 20. Whoops. 20. 21, 22. And then it goes 26, 28, 29, 35. And then count them up to make sure you have 11. Now that we have them in order, let's start listing things. Like 14. 14 is the minimum. 35 then is the maximum. Those are two easy ones. I have to start working my way towards the middle here 
because I've got to find the median before I can find my upper and lower quartiles. We'll go back and add to that definition when we're done with this then. So, what we have here is, I'll change colors, and we'll eventually have to take them off. 14, 35 are gone, 16, 29 are gone, 17, 28, 17, 26, 20, and 22. So that leaves you with 21, which we'll call the median, right? I used a light color. I'm going to leave that on there. Otherwise, it's going to take a while to take off. So that's my median, middle number. Now, that's how you find a median. How we find the upper quartile, then, is to go to the upper half. Because remember, the quartile is 25% of the data. So what's half of a half? A half of a half is a fourth, which is 25%. And so what we can do, then, is you include or you start over again but you only deal with the numbers in the top half, including 21, which was your median. I take that back. I spoke too fast. Do not include the median when you are finding the upper and lower medians or quartiles. And so you'll start at 22. And so if we start moving in from 22, and if you start moving in from 22, we'll find that we end up with 35, 22 gone, 26, 29, and we end up with 28. That's our upper medium. Sorry, I'm not sure. I'm going to do the exact same thing for the bottom half. Do not include 21. So 14, 20, 16, 17. So 17 is what we call the lower median. So now you found all five pieces of information. Digital clock. Oh, yeah, 918. How many people during the school year sit there and go, this to see the time. I look I'm like, the, the clock. clock, the clock's right there. I can't tell time on that. I'm like, are, are you, you serious? serious? 